dear colleague, dear friend. My name is He Huang. I'm a researcher from Mobi Research Center in the Free University of Brussels. My topic today is integrating social demographic profiles into multi-actor, multi-criteria analysis, a case study on university COVID-19 policy evaluation. This presentation will be divided into four parts. First, I will introduce your multi-actor, multi-criteria analysis, MOMCA. MOMCA framework is introduced, and later on, I will bring out the mass participation concept in MOMCA. Next, a case study will be applied with mass participation MOMCA. After discussing the result, a conclusion of this study will be made. MOMCA is a multi-criteria decision-making methodology that allows for the inclusion of multiple stakeholders. Stakeholders are the people who have an interest, financial or otherwise, in the consequence of any decision taken. In MAMCA, multiple stakeholders can be invited for the evaluation of their stakeholder groups. To evaluate a set of alternatives, different stakeholder groups can have unique criteria traits that concern their interests to evaluate a set of alternatives. This picture illustrates the MAMCA methodology. It consists of seven steps. Define alternatives, stakeholder analysis, identify criteria and ways, define criteria indicators, overall analysis, result discussion, and implementation. Unlike classic multi-criteria analysis, MOMCA involves stakeholders after defining the alternatives. The stakeholder analysis is conducted, stakeholders are identified, and the criteria tree for each of them can be constructed. In the overall analysis, each stakeholder group will apply individual multi-criteria analysis. They won't influence the evaluation of the other group, and only at the next step, the result is discussed. MONCA is a decision-making methodology which allows high interaction with stakeholders to better adapt the concept of stakeholder group's involvement and to better facilitate the workshop. The standard MONCA participation framework was introduced. The decision makers and stakeholders have different tasks on each MOMCA step. And in the workshop, the decision makers can coordinate stakeholders, for example, in data allocation and evaluation. Stakeholders can also provide feedbacks to decision makers, such as proposing a possible missed criteria for the stakeholder group. Still, for some stakeholder groups, this participation framework is not well suited, especially when there are stakeholder groups like citizens. This kind of group could have a massive amount of stakeholders. It is important to collect more profiles from the group. The opinions from the group need to be heard as much as possible, as it is considered a way to reduce uncertainty and to improve the demographic legitimacy of those processes. Because the stakeholders in the group normally have different social economic statuses, which is SES, the different voices need to be heard instead of only represented by one or limited amount during the evaluation. On the other hand, such stakeholders are hard to reach, especially under the pandemic. Offline workshop is not possible anymore. Therefore, the MAMCA mass participation framework is proposed. In such a way, the stakeholders and the decision makers can work independently. The work stakeholders can with the criteria and evaluate the alternatives under the assistance of the survey to instruction. Without guidelines from the decision makers, unlike the standard MOMCA participation framework, where the stakeholders have to participate in the physical or online workshop. We proposed the mass participation concept in a previous paper, and in this work, we will demonstrate the mass participation MOMCA in a case of the VUB COVID policy evaluation. The COVID-19 has been spread in all over the world for more than one year. In Europe, until February 2021, there were already cumulatively 50 million people infected. Belgian government installed measures to contain the disease from different aspects. Education corresponds to one of the most important parts of the measures taken. From 18 May 2020, the schools were able to teach again. Various measures have been taken for reopening the school's campuses. Flemish University established, in cooperation with the government, a framework of pandemic level 
given that the situation fluctuates considerably. In this case study, we would like to evaluate the pandemic levels with the involvement of multiple stakeholder groups. In this case, the evaluated alternatives pandemic levels influence more than one stakeholder group in campus, and there are a large number of stakeholders within one group, especially the students have divergent social demographic profiles. VUB is required by students from all over the world who are pursuing their bachelor, master, or PhD studies. It has students from 128 countries. In the meantime, the stakeholders are hard to reach under the lockdown situation. It could become even harder during the exam period. Thus, the mass participation manka is suitable for this case. In this case, the alternatives are the pandemic levels, which consists four codes, ranging from code green to red, where green means that there is no contingency, academic and extracurricular activities are carried out without restrictions, until the red, where all the measures are taken with the highest degree of online course possible. There are different stakeholders of which only students, professors, and researchers were taken into account since they are the main actors. Other stakeholder groups were not directly affected by the di different policies, or it was not possible to determine the valid criteria for such groups, such as the staff of the university or the families. To identify the criteria for each stakeholder groups, an initial list of criteria come up after the brainstorming. These criteria are validated by different stakeholder groups. For example, for the student group, the list was sent by email to about 100 students to get their opinions and validate the proposed criteria. They were asked what they considered to be the main criteria to consider. Based on the situation, they were experienced and the possible alternatives. Other criteria were suggested as part of the investigation. Consequently, it was determined that sub-criteria could be determined. Otherwise, they were overlap between some criteria. Finally, some elements were eliminated, such as the workload and collective security, since they were not representative for the group or were associated with other criteria already raised. At the end, the criteria set for student group are identified. Health, mental well-being, quality of education are the first layer criteria. Under mental well-being, there are sub-criteria, work-home balance, and social contact. Under the quality of education, there are involvement, interaction, and access to locations and the tools offered by the university. Health is represented as not contact contracting the COVID-19 virus. Mental well-being is mental condition that provides a feeling of satisfaction and tranquility. Under mental well-being, there are two sub-criteria, work-home balance and social contact. Work-home balance is is being able to perform academic tasks at home without distraction in a suitable environment and with the tool for it. Social context is to maintain interaction with colleagues and other people associated with the university for recreational or non-academic purposes that are possible in non-contingency condition. Quality of education is the extent of meeting quality standards in the education process as it is done without the state of contingency. Under quality of education, there are three criteria. Involvement means the academic participation and focus on online classes under contingency conditions compared to the normal situation. Interaction means interaction with colleagues, professors, and other members of the academic community that allows increasing knowledge through debate and questions. Access to locations and tools offered by the university is the availability of locations normally offered by the university, such as laboratories, sport facilities, restaurants, etc. In a similar way, the criteria of professor group and research groups are also identified. Here is the criteria for the professor groups. 
there are four main criteria, which are health, workload, mental well-being, quality of education. Under mental well-being, there are two sub-criteria, work home balance and social context. Under quality of the education, there are academic interaction and access to location and tools offered by the university, these two criteria. Here is the criteria for the research group. Uh, for the research group, there are three main criteria, health, mental well-being, and access to location and the tools offered by the university. Under the mental well-being, there are two sub-criteria, work-home balance and the social context. Afterwards, we ask the stakeholders to evaluate through the online MOMCA platform. A survey tool is developed in the MOMCA software. Dedicated pages for the survey tool are built called MOMCA Survey 2 pages. Each MOMCA project has individual survey setting pages, and the decision makers can publish the surveys dedicated to different stakeholder groups, in which different survey questions can be asked. Also, the decision makers have an option to ask stakeholders to evaluate alternatives or not, while the weight allocation of criteria is a must. An efficient and transparent weight elicitation technique is proposed, which is based on semantic relative importance classes. Stakeholders are required to weigh the criteria based on their priorities. They need to represent relative importances on an ordinal score level. The scale is chosen based on the magic number 7 plus or minus 2. By choosing the 5-point Richter scale, the stakeholders can have space of the mind to process the information. In the meantime, the priority or priority ranking is enough, has enough levels concerning the accuracy of the weight. Plus, the zero class is added for giving a vanish weight in the judgment. Stakeholders are asked to define relative importance classes in the above mentioned scale. They need to rank at least one criteria as the most important, as it never empty. Then, stakeholders weigh the other criteria by comparing the most important criteria. Weight allocation from all stakeholders in the group are collected. Suppose there are n criteria in the criteria set of the stakeholder group. The multiple stakeholder profiles of criteria K rank on the class weight score IC is WKIC which means the proportionality of the criterion percentage profiles of the class weight by, take, by taking the arithmetic means of the important state classes, the not normalized weight NNW of the criteria is gotten. Then the normalized weight NW of the criteria K is the NNW of criterion K proportional to the NNW set. The final weight elicitation of stud students group are listed. We can see that al the allocation of the importance level on different criteria, also the standard deviation are listed, and the not normalized weight, normalized weights are also listed. By collecting social demographic profiles of the stakeholders, it can provide a broad view of the stakeholder groups which helps the decision makers identify profiles, concerns, and opi opinions. In this case, we asked students four questions, their age, nationality, gender, and life statuses. The results of the social demographic situation of the respondents are graphically represented in this slide. Given that the group's response to most of the criteria or sub-criteria have the same trend, we will use a MOMCA software to identify the social demographic characteristics that could generate a difference. In this video, I will show you how in this video I will show you how the compare how to compare the weight allocation within one stakeholder group based on their social demographic statuses. So we can go into the detail page of the survey. Here we can find the survey detail of the weight allocation. We check the standard deviation of the criteria weight. And then we click the table, uh, the tape social economic profiles. 
we can compare the weight allocation of one SES by making the comparison group. For example, we want to check the weight allocation based on gender. Just create two groups, check the other profiles, and compare the male and female. The weight allocation well, the weight allocation bar chart is shown. So here we will check all the all the other other social demographic profiles, but makes a different group of the gender. So here we can say that there is not much difference in the weight allocation. For some criteria, there is only one percent of the difference. So after checking the quality of the survey result, we can import the weight allocation of the stakeholder groups into the MAMCA project. In mass participation MAMCA, the overall analysis is applied by the collaboration between the stakeholder groups and experts. The stakeholder group fills the survey to allocate the weight, and the expert will evaluate the alternative based on the criteria. The final result is gotten through the weighted sum of the evaluation. Here is a screenshot of the overall analysis for the student pool. We can see that the student allocate health and mental well-being higher weight than quality of education, but overall the weights are similar. In the end, the best scenario for the student is a green code as they gave a very high score on mental well-being and the quality of the education. For the professor groups, stakeholders give a very high priority to the criteria health, which leads to the final result prefers to the best scenario for the health guarantee, red code. For researchers group, stakeholders place mental well-being in the first place. In the green code, there is no constriction for the social contact, and the workload is well balanced to the home time. Thus, the green code is the best scenario for them. The multi-actor view visualizes the performance of four codes on different stakeholder groups. We can say that the preferences of the alternative vary from stakeholder groups. This is the objectives of MOMCA, which shows the different points of view from different stakeholder groups. In this study, the factor of age plays an important role in, flu in influencing decision making. Older people will care more about their health, avoid getting the virus, while the young people, eager the normal social contacts, focus more on the mental well-being. In the future, we will have a deep discussion of the post forces after gathering the survey. A dedicated work will be done to discuss when, the, when and how to cluster the stakeholder group based on the collected information. After clustering the stakeholders, we will try to reach consensus within stakeholder groups. Previously, we published a paper about reaching consensus between the stakeholder groups. The future study will be investigating the consensus problem within one, within the one group. In conclusion, to involve more stakeholders and uh, hear, hear the voice of them, a new MAMCA survey framework for the mass participation is designed. We developed a survey tool that is built in MAMCA software. We applied mass participation MAMCA in VUB COVID policy evaluation based on the MAMCA software. The software helps us to investigate the intra-connection within one stakeholder group based on the social demographic profiles. In the future, the method of clustering will be explored. Thanks for your listening.